Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet and it is mystery pattern time. If you're new to the channel, I have a bunch of patterns here that range from the 1840s to the 1980s. Each pattern has been blacked out. Anything that could be a telltale sign of what the pattern could possibly be. All photos have been removed, but they are saved and each photo is numbered. We just shuffle these around a little bit, pick a number, match it to the pattern, and we work that pattern. We simply work the text with zero context. Okay, we've got lots and lots of patterns here from all over the eras. So here we go. Let's pick our pattern. Oh, and by the way, the reason I know that I don't know what these patterns are is because my son picks out all of these patterns for me and he does all of the cutting up, numbering, and he's got all of the pictures in his room too. So here we go. What do we have here? Oh, number 17. Okay, let's see what number 17 is. This, since this one doesn't appear to have any pictures cut out and we don't have any tape to peel back, my guess is the uh, there's going to be a photo and probably the name of what the item is is attached to that photo as well. So, okay, it says here that we need materials, size five and a half long, so this might be something small. A DMC Pearl Cotton number five, 53 yard, yard balls in assorted colors. Steel crochet hook size number zero zero. Modern, that's gonna be a three millimeter hook. Um, okay, let me get everything I need. It doesn't say how many colors. Okay, I'll be right back. It's right here that whatever this is, is worked with double strand of cotton wind each ball into a double strand and then round one with double strand of thread so i went back through my stash and i found colors that i have two of just because I, I i know you can work from the inside and the outside of the ball i really don't like doing that it just drives me crazy so i have two of these i have double of these double of these this is going to be interesting colors double of these and double of these. So th that's gonna be my official color options. Okay, so it says here a cluster, cause you know, a lot of different patterns have different definitions for what their cluster is. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the same stitch four times, yarn over and through all the loops on a hook chain one eye of the cluster. Okay, round one with a double strand of thread. See note one, well, I don't have note one. With the double strand of the thread, chain 16, slip stitch in back loop of a second chain from a hook. So we're gonna slip stitch in back loop. There's a slip stitch. And in next four chain, continue working back loops only. So in the next four, so that is, let me put this right here. One, two, three, and four. Now, single crochet in each of the next four chain, half double crochet in each of the next three. So, single crochet in each of the next four. One, two, three, and four. Half double crochet in each of the next three. One, two, and three. And then half double crochet, and then double crochet in each of the next two. 10 double crochet in last chain. Okay, so two, yeah, I do have three left. So here we go. 
two double crochet in the next two and then 10 into the last chain. That's gonna really pack it in there. All right, now 10 into this last chain. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera. There is one, I'll be right back. Now it looks like we're gonna mirror everything we just did. So I've got my 10 double crochet worked in now. And I wonder if we're making a shoe. I wonder if we're making like a baby's shoe. Hmm, okay. So it says 10 double crochet. Okay, working on opposite side of chain, double crochet in next two, half double crochet in next three, single crochet in next four, and slip stitch in remaining five. Slip stitch in first stitch and then end off, and we're gonna join another color. Okay, so just gonna mirror everything we already did. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in this end along the way. I do wonder if we're making like a shoe, like a baby's sandal or slipper or something. This is interesting, very interesting. Okay. So, no, this is gonna be a slight struggle here, isn't it? Oh, the struggle is real. Okay, that's one. The rest should be fairly easy. And two, I'm gonna work three half doubles. and everything else like the rest. I'll be right back. It says to slip stitch in first stitch, which should be right here, and then end off. I hope that's the first stitch. Kind of hard to tell sometimes. There we go. And then change color. Moving on to yellow, join another color in back loop of last stitch of round. Okay, work two single crochet into the same stitch. So I'm going to chain one and work two single crochet. One and two. Now it says, uh, working in back loops only, single crochet in each of the next nine stitches. So back loops only. One, two. Let me actually mark that first stitch so that it doesn't get lost. My eyes, you know, sometimes stitches get lost. That's two. I'll be right back. I'm going to work nine single crochet into the back loop only. Now it says to work a half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. So yarn over and one, two, three, four, five and six. Okay. Half double here, six stitches. Two half double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. So we're gonna work 20 half double crochet. So, okay. I will be right back. I'm gonna do that off camera. There is our 20 half double crochet by way of two in each of the next 10 stitches. What do we have? It's, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm still thinking it's a baby shoe. An ornately colored baby shoe. I don't know. Okay. Half double crochet in, half double crochet in next five stitches. I'll be right back. I'm going to work at one half double crochet into the next five stitches. There are my five half double crochet. Now we have eight, one single crochet into the next eight stitches. Join with a slip stitch in the first stitch and off. Turn to wrong side. 
Okay, so single crochet in the next eight stitches and then join with the slip stitch in the first. So I'm gonna do that. One, two, and three. I'll be right back. Joining with the slip stitch, should we join into the back loop only? Join into the whole stitch. I kind of want to join into the whole stitch. It just feels more secure that way. Okay. It's going to be a lot of tails, isn't there? All these color changes. I'm onto this sort of charcoal color. Okay, so we're going to join another color in second stitch of round two. So here is the front of my work and here is the back of my work. There is stitch one and stitch two. It's not saying back loop. I should probably just weave in all these ends really quick, huh? Kind of in the way. And now it says uh, two single crochet, no, two single crochet in this stitch. And two, I should be all right. Uh, cluster stitch in next stitch. Okay, so that was a yarn over. Go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, three and four, because it said to do it four times and pull through all the loops and chain one. Let's see if I could do a tighter chain one on that. Yeah, it's as tight as it's gonna get. Okay. Let's see here, where am I? Uh, single crochet, two single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in next stitch. Okay, so we're gonna work two single crochet into this stitch stop and weave in these tails. One, two, one single crochet into the next stitch, and then a cluster into the next. One, two, three, and four. I am no longer thinking that this is a shoe or else that is just mean. <laughs> All these hard clusters on your feet. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna weave in all of these ends because they are really getting in my way. I'll be right back. Okay, got all those ends weaved in. So here's our repeat because this is where we ended, right? Okay, cluster stitch and neck stitch single crochet in each so i'm guessing this was an increase that we were working up here uh single crochet uh oh i got lost in each of the next two stitches repeat around and in and last repeat with single crochet in next stitch slip stitch into first single crochet 17 clusters end off and turn to right side so our repeat is going to be a cluster stitch which i just worked and then two single crochet and then a cluster. So we're gonna be working clusters with two single crochet separating, but not two single crochet into the same stitch, just two single crochet into the next two stitches. I'm gonna drag this tail along with me. So into the next two stitches, I work one single crochet into each of them. One, two, now a cluster one, two, three, and four. Chain one and into the next two stitches, one single crochet in each. One and two. Then a cluster into the third stitch over. One, two, three, and four. 
There we go. So I'm going to work that all the way around. I guess we don't work any increases up here like we did down here. Kind of strange. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. What is this? Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to continue to work the repeat to the end. Okay, so I'm going to join into my very first single crochet made with a slip stitch and then cut. Okay, so here we go. All done. I have, well, maybe it'll be easier with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen clusters and a perfect representation of Staphylococcus bacteria. Staphylococcus delecti. <laughs> I'm teasing. Okay, so this is the next color in my lineup, and this is my last color here. So here we go with this like mustardy green, mossy green color. Just noticed I've got another color to join right here. So I'm gonna bring that pink back in. I just don't know where I'm gonna put it. Maybe not, hang on. I'm not adding white, it's neutral enough, right? Yeah, I think I might do this color and then put the white next to it and still end with coral. Okay, so remember it said to end off and turn to right side. So now we're gonna be working on the right side with the clusters facing us and join another color with single crochet in stitch before first cluster. Do not work in eyes of clusters. Two single crochet, okay. Okay, so in next stitch before first cluster, well, we were working this way and so our first cluster is here, so the stitch before our first cluster is right here. Okay, so that was join with a single crochet Okay. Single crochet in stitch before first cluster. Do not work in eyes of clusters. Two single crochet in next stitch. So working around the cluster, two single crochet, jump over it. Here is my next stitch right here. That was kind of hard to see because that's the top of my cluster there. They call it the eye of the cluster. So I'm gonna work into this stitch right here and work two single crochet. I guess I want those clusters to really protrude, I guess. Okay, two single crochet in next stitch. Do not work in eyes of cluster, two single crochet in next stitch. Single crochet in next 10 stitches. Do I still not work in the eye? I guess not. Um, next 10 stitches, no. Single crochet, next 10 stitches, yes, and then half doubles, okay. So single crochet in the next 10 stitches, and I'm gonna weave all these ends in along the way. Okay, so one the stitch, two, three, skip over the top of the cluster, four, five, oops, six, yeah, okay, way over here is seven, I'll be right back. Okay, now I have my 10 worked and half double crochet in the next four stitches and double crochet in the next two stitches. Half double crochet into the next four. Okay, that's, oh boy. One, two, three, and four. Then two double crochet into the next two. That's one. Skip over the cluster. 
that's two and I think that's enough tail weaved in well let me straighten everything up first before I cut All right, so that's two double crochet worked. Now we have two double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next three stitches five times. Just do it like they said. Okay, so two double crochet into this stitch, and then one into the next three. One, two, and three, and then two double crochet into the next. So that was one time. Now I'm starting my second repeat, and then one double crochet into the next three. One. Two, did I skip one? No, I did not. Three, that's two. Two repeats done. Two into this one here. One, two, and then one, two, and three, that's three repeats. I'm gonna finish the rest of this off camera. I'll be right back. I think it's really starting to take form now. Okay, five times, two double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, so we're gonna work two double crochet into the next. Two, and then into the next two stitches we work one double crochet into each half double crochet into the next four stitches and eight single crochet after that okay half double crochet into the next four One, two, oh Jesus, I'm sorry, three, four, and then eight single crochet. One, two, I'll be right back. We are to end with two single crochet into the last stitch. One, and two. slip stitch into the first single crochet there we are very interesting slip stitch okay round five join another color I'm gonna join white with a single crochet and last stitch of last round. So my last stitch is right here. Let me get my white ready. Join with a single crochet into last single crochet of last round. There we go. Okay. It says single crochet into the next two stitches. Here we go. One. 
and two. And of course, I am dragging my tails along with me to the next two stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch. One and two. Okay, and then single crochet into the next eight stitches and then half double crochet into the next eight stitches. So let's do that. Work eight single crochet in a row and then eight half double crochet in a row. That's two, I'll be right back. I'm gonna work my eight, does my eight singles. Now I'm gonna work my eight half doubles in a row. One and two, three, crunch. Who remembers that commercial? Okay, I'll be right back, that's three. That is eight half doubles. Now we're gonna work two half double into the next stitch and half double crochet into the next three stitches eight times. So we're gonna start with two into this next stitch here. One and two, and then work three. One, three in a row, I mean. Two and three in a row then two into the same stitch. One and two, and then three in a row. One, two, and three, oops. And then two into the same stitch. One and two, I'll be right back. So I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, now we are up here and it says half double crochet in the next six stitches and single crochet in the next six stitches. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then six singles. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I must be off somewhere two single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches, two single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next two. I've got three extra stitches here. Slip stitch into the first. Let me count my work. My stitch count is correct on this round, so it must be somewhere on this mustardy green round where I got the stitch count wrong. That's okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna make it work, right? So, after the last, we work six half doubles, six single. So here we go, one, two, three. Here's what I'm gonna do. That makes, is that even a stitch right there? Yeah, it is. Okay, that makes four half double. That's four. five and six and I'm going to reduce two single crochet so one two three four five and six, there we go. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like it never happened. That's what we call making it work. <laughs> okay, two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next two stitches. So we're gonna work two single crochet into the next stitch, like nothing happened. We did not just commit crochet crimes. I don't know what you're talking about. 
two single crochet here, and then two single crochet into the last two stitches. And then we slip stitch into our starting single. And cut. All right. Going to end off with the coral. I think that's going to be pretty. But now I'm kind of wishing I had ended off with the white because I kind of like the white. Whatever this is. I think it's like an applique. I don't know. Okay. It says here to join another color in, pardon me, in back loop of top stitch on small end. So back loop of right here. Okay, chain three and slip stitch in the last slip stitch made. One, two, and three, and slip stitch in the last slip stitch made. What? Oh. Do they mean, oh, you know what I did? I, I weaved in, I worked my tail in on that. My bad. Okay. Do they mean one, two, three, the last chain made? Cause it says Pico made. I think they mean last chain. Like they're, I think they mean last lip stitch, but you know, chain. Okay. Pico made. Skip next stitch, slip stitch in back loop of next stitch, and repeat from here around. So skip this stitch, slip stitch into this back loop only, and make a pico. and into the back loop only of the next. Work a slip stitch, chain three, and make a pico. Skip, back loop only of the next, slip stitch, chain three, work into the first chain made with a slip stitch. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna work this all around. I'll be right back. Okay, so I worked my way all the way around. I worked my last pico, and then I just I skipped a stitch and slip stitched in to the last. Oh gosh, the curse of the hair. Okay, and now it says drop one strand of cotton. With single strand, make a chain five and a half to six inches long, slip stitch into the first stitch, end off. Weave in all yarn ends on wrong side and block. I don't think we need to block. It looks great. It's a beautiful bacteria. Okay. I don't think it's a bacteria. I'm just teasing. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, with one strand, I have dropped one strand. And I'm just going to chain a whole bunch. I'll be right back. Okay, there is five and a half inches. That was 30 chains. And then slip stitch into the first. So right down here. And then that should be it. Now we will get to uncover this see what it is. Oh, no, I was going to say, are we supposed to make two and it's like a coin purse? Sew them together and it's like a coin purse? I've got to sew in those ends there. Uh, okay. 
let's just look and see what it is. Let me, let me run down the hallway. Okay, I know what it is now. And it's very, very cool. Very, very cool. Paisley Pear Drop Christmas Ornament. How cool is that? Oh, I like this one. They only used like three colors total in this one. That's cool. So they're not using a different color every time like I did. This one has a little bit more color. They're just kind of mix and matching the same colors. But that's okay. That is so cool. So it's not bacteria. <laughs> it's not a virus. It is a paisley oh from the 70s that makes so much sense and look with my little mistake right here where i had to work a couple of stitches together it kind of made it almost look even more paisley you know like that's kind of cool oh my god oh this one was fun i love it when it's a success and it's a cool looking success oh i like this i like this this one here is going to go into the scrapbook what scrapbook? Just a moment. So I did a thing. Uh, Rosemary, you may have seen her a few times in the comments. She's been honestly a friend of mine since the um, It's Not Knit channel. Let me raise this camera up. Emailed me this wonderful video of a woman who was going through an antique crochet uh, sampler book slash scrapbook. And it, it really made me want to do that, especially with all these mystery patterns we work. So I went on Amazon, and of course, I'm going to leave a link. Nothing is affiliated. I'm not affiliated with Amazon. I used to be on my other channel, but it was kind of ridiculous. So I'm not affiliated with anybody on earth. So I will leave a link for this on Amazon. It is 10 by 10. It is square. But I wanted to make, create my own sampler slash scrapbook and it's going to be of everything that we work on on the channel samples of things filet crochet and all that so it has black cardboard these are like cardboard pages um i'll have to figure out that's the only thing i can't figure out is how to affix the things to it because i can't sew them onto the cardboard so i'm thinking maybe a a double-sided tape. I don't want to use pins because that will ultimately ruin. See, this is this is the cuff, 1846 cuff that I made. Well, this is one of the things that I would like to keep, you know, into the scrapbook like that, and then just write below what it is, what year I made it, all this and that. I'm thinking maybe double-sided tape. While that will be temporary you know, throughout. I'm hoping in 100 years from now, somebody will open this book and look at it. That'll be temporary, like 100 years from now. I also bought these plastic sleeves that go over each page, and I'm going to seal the bottom of each sleeve shut. So as these things throughout the decades loosen up and fall, they're not going to be gone. They're still going to be here. And so hopefully that will help keep it you know, maybe it'll slide down to the bottom or whatnot, but they won't be ruined by pins. They won't rust out. They won't be stitched on, just double-sided taped on, and that'll be fine. Eventually the tape will wear off, but these plastic sleeves will help keep them in place. And so this book was, I think it was like $30 for the book. And you can see, you can add more pages, which I bought. I bought another pack of 20 pages. And the, the refill pack or the additional pages was like $8.99 for them. And then the plastic sleeves was like 7 or $8. And it comes with these little stickers, cor picture corners, you know. But that's what I want to do. And, you know, I'll just get like a silver paint marker or a gold paint marker and write my name, the state I live in, what year this is, and, and maybe a little synopsis of what this is about. Because I imagine in 100 years from now, maybe the internet will still exist. I don't know if anything will still exist. But I want to be a part of that history, and I want you to as well. So this Paisley is going to go into the Mystery Pattern Sampler Scrapbook. And it's just going to be so neat. We'll be able to turn page after page. And I wanted to get one of these loose ring binders so that we don't have to be constrained by, um, you know, limit. we don't have to be limited by a regular binder. 
There we go. And it comes with an extra ring. I don't know why, but it did. It did. But yes, you can fit, I can fit a lot more in there, as you can see. I can really pack it. And I may have to get two or three of these books because, you know, it's crochet. It can, it can add up. It can be thick. Like, let me put this down here. Yeah. So it can get thick. So I may need to get a few of these. But yes, so I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm going to share, look in the description box down below. You're going to find all kinds of links this time. I'm going to share a link to that video that Rosemary shared with me. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I'm going to share a link to this book if you're interested in doing your own scrap slash sampler book. I think this was fun looking. Oh my goodness, I actually like it. What a fun, quick pattern. You know what? I've only been filming for like an hour and a half. This worked up so quick. I could have had it made in an hour if I didn't have to stop and film every row, which doesn't bother me. I'm just saying this works up really fast. That's pretty cool. If you wanted to use thinner thread, you know, you can use this as a gift tag on gift boxes in the Christmas time. Ooh, or make a bunch of them for little appliques for your hats and, and mittens and scarves. Cute. Okay, guys. So, I, yeah, I wanted to show you this. And they have different ones. Um, like, they have ones with little hearts and stuff all over them. Just real pretty. But you'll see. I'll, I'll share the listing down below. So, just check out the description box. There it is. Let me know what you guys think of it. It's a success. It's a success. And I still love this. Oh, I love this so much. This was made with that, like, 90-plus-year-old thread I had. That number 60 thread. Whew. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Okay, guys, I will see you in the next mystery. Bye.